Yeah. Oh, I wanted to ask you, actually, uh, you remember the picture I showed you of my glyph that they left me hanging from the tree? Yeah. Did, did you see any, any energy in that? Because I because they're oh, yeah. always around. They're always watching. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting well, energy, energy right now. They're, I'm getting some energy. Glyph. They're always watching when uh, when when you know when they leave you something that like that. They're they're, they're watching to see what you do. And yeah. How you're if around. you go back to that glyph, I want you to put your hand inside of it, even though it's a very narrow spot. Put your hand inside of it and see if you can feel the energy flux because there was energy radiating out of it. Yeah. I've and done that before. Yeah, there was several spots in the photo that you showed me of energy signatures of them in the woods. Let me let me just bring it up quickly because I'm wondering if they're they're watching because I got a feeling. Well, do you, do you want me to or no? It's up to you. But this do you want to have a look at it and see what you see if you feel yeah. anything? In fact, I have, I, have little, I have this little remote control so I can make my head bigger than Brian's. <laughs> <laughs> that's impossible what a what a what a good dig man i love it well i'll I tell you what you guys I, get you guys get the greatest glyphs too oh my god your glyphs are so amazing uh let me just bring this up i had yesterday i had two very dear friends of mine william lunsford and oh william's a good guy William is, and he had uh, his friend, Daniel, who's a mutual friend of mine. His name is Daniel, and I, I love Daniel to pieces. We talk quite a bit, and they were out in the woods, and so we were doing the video chat thing, and I was going, okay, off to your left, energy signature there. doesn't matter if you can see it or not, and go over here, and then pretty soon they would hear movement over there. And Yeah, so the energy signatures pay off. It has definitely helped me a lot. So I got a few of these, so we can look at a couple. Just I'm just interested to see if you feel anything. Yeah, watching I've, i'm looking right now i've got one two three i would say probably five good spots of energy hits besides what's in the middle of the glyph so how do you perceive that you just it's just one of your gifts right or do you actually see yeah. something that, that that tells you is there no, something that i mean no for? what it is is i feel a pull to the energy there and because i know yeah. how to read energy I know what a Sasquatch energy is opposed to like a dogman energy. I can tell if it's a hybrid that's crossed between the dogman and the Sasquatch or if it's an ET energy. It, it's just like a pull. I feel a connection like from my heart that pulls me to it. Yeah. And then that will pull. Okay, like there's one over there, and there. Yeah, you've got them all over there. They're, the whole clan I think was there in, in big performance and again i don't expect people to see them physically see them when i find the energy signatures because it's just an energy signature it's not something that's going to pop up yeah and be a physical form well i mean they have me working in energy too but they, they, we all do different stuff absolutely we, we all we all perceive them in different ways or whatever so i was just yeah, interested on your, on your insight on that uh, yeah but, uh, did you see this by the way uh alfred no, I haven't seen this one, no. But I'll tell you what, I don't know what or when this has happened to me, but I've noticed that I've started doing psychometry and like touching stuff and reading stuff and feeling energies. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, my friends say I've been doing it forever, but I don't remember doing it. But recently, I know that I've, I've actually noticed that I'm doing it, you know, mm -hmm. and um yeah, I mean, I don't know why. It's just I have the I have the need to touch stuff and like close my eyes and feel the energy, or maybe something come to my uh, mind's eye or whatever, you know. And uh, I, something like that would definitely draw me right to it, you know. I mean, that would yeah. that's amazing. You, like I said, you guys get the the most amazing glyphs. I mean, they're so intricate and it's just mind boggling. Psychometry is, can be really powerful. If you if you can do psychometry on a rock, you can learn the whole history of the Earth. That's how yeah. powerful. Wow. It, you know, like, it, that's how powerful it can be. It, it could also be, you know, who touched it or something like so, those kind of things. You know, like who touched the crystal or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah, psychometry is really powerful. You can do it with trees and. Yep. Yeah, I've done. Right. I've done it. I've done when I had my ascension. I did it with the quartz crystal stones that were left for me. Uh, they were around a, a tree and I did it. Or I did it with the quartz. Again, I don't know what just made me want to touch these quartz crystal stones. And then I actually touched the tree that they were around and I felt the energy. 
going through me, through my body. And I felt the energy in the tree as well. And it was just, just so amazing, you know, just yeah. so amazing. It's just, I'll go it's, up to footprints and put my hand on a footprint. And then as soon as oh, I put wow. my hand on a footprint, I get the visual of the individual, the sex, what they look like, their history, all of it. That's I, that's I that. also tracking. You, you can <laughs> and the, the people who can do what she said. Well, you put your you either stand or you put your hand in the middle of a footprint, or or a track. You can actually uh, develop such a strong connection to it that you can follow that all the way to where that animal is, whether it's a sausage. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. how. That's what real tracking is all about. And they, they they there's people who can see it. They'll see a, a silver ribbon. And they just follow that silver ribbon. And it doesn't matter oh, if, wow. if, if a deer went into a herd of deer, right? So there's all these deer and it's from one herd. You'd still be able to pick out that exact animal. Uh, oh, that's that's yeah. what real and, tracking you know, is. It's just weird. It's like I can go and put my hand on something and it's just like a movie starts playing of all of it. Or if I'll look at it and just focus, even if it's, you know, like if I focus on something, I get like yeah. this whole past history of it. And I had kind of something. Going on with it. I had something kind of interesting. I kind of happened one time where I, I, I was looking at, at a track, or maybe I was thinking about a track. You know, all these, some of these experiences, they all jumble together. So the, the beginning part might not be, might not be <laughs> completely accurate. I either saw a track or I was thinking about tracks. Then all of a sudden, I, I when I was walking, I saw the tracks as I was walking to just appear. Does that make oh, any wow. sense? Yeah, that's tracking. That's tracking. Yeah, you it's, it's your like mind? you're gonna have a premonition of what I could see. I could see the tra they weren't there, like in the when, when you know before I was doing it. But as I was walking along, they were showing up. I could see them, and you know, like physically see yeah. them with my. Eyes. I think that's, that's awesome. yeah, that's 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 just what he. That's the same kind of a process. I, I mean, there's a lot of variations to it, but it's the same idea as psychometry. Yeah. Hey, Dean, and, you and want to what... share? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's psychometry. Now, were, were you going to go with I'm that? saying that's psychometry, and that that is a, it's the same thing as 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 divining rods. It's the same thing as pendulums. It's the same kind of an idea, but but you can, you know, that's that's how we survived on this planet for so long. We didn't, we weren't very good hunters. So you just you had one guy who was a tracker and another guy who was a hunter. And then the other yeah. guys were hunters, and the tracker would would always take them to the right place. If he didn't do that, if he didn't do that, you wouldn't eat. So <laughs> that's one of our abilities. Yeah, I keep getting these glimpses of stuff like that, that uh, possibilities maybe for the future or something. See, that was, that was one of them. All, I have all these wacky abilities, and I do all these crazy things. <laughs> I have no idea what they're called. No idea what yeah. they're called. And it's like with mind speak. I was mind speaking before I could talk. And then when it became apparent that not everybody was, I didn't know what they called it. I didn't find out till I was in my forties and a friend of mine is telling me how he could mind speak with the Sasquatch. I thought, Oh my gosh, I want to do that so bad. That would be so much fun. And he kept going. He didn't really go in depth as to what he was getting. He was just telling me these things. I thought, God, I wish I could do that. And we're out in the woods one day and they said, well, tell him such and such. And I told him and he looked at me and he said, how'd you know that? I said, well, they told me. He said, you get mind speak? I said, I didn't even know that's what it was called. I've been doing that since I was a toddler. <laughs> he, got really, he got mad at me. He got mad at me. And I was like, why are you mad at me? Well, you didn't tell me you could do that. And I said, well, don't have to be mad at me. I didn't tell you I can do a lot of things. You know, I can mean, project remote view, but that just because I don't say it doesn't mean I can't do it. But yeah. a lot of stuff, I don't even, you know, I don't know what the technical term is because I just mm. have always done it. <laughs> yeah, like, same with it me. Natural, it seemed natural to you. You probably probably thought it wasn't that. No, and that you know, it's like I can look down my dirt road, and it's like even if I don't see anything down there, I can get a visual of what has been down there, even if there's no prints or anything. It's just it's really wonky. That's I'm a freak cool. show. I'm a walking hey, talking freak show. Hey beans, when I was making my coffee, you wanted to have share screen to show something. Did you still want to do that? Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we could do that. I think this is a, important because it fits in with what we're doing. Let me open up this. Um... By the way, thanks for stopping in, Alfred. Oh, thanks for inviting me in. I was Alfred, just it was uh, so great to see you. Absolutely good to see. You. I, you know, I was in the chat the other night too. Who, whose show were you on? I don't remember. You just did like two shows in a row. I did. 
country boy cryptids last night. Okay, yeah, there. Okay, I was. For so Christmas. I was in. I was in Chris's chat, and then you were on someone or else too, like the day or two before. Whenever. Oh, I don't know. I, I haven't been on a show in a couple of weeks, but oh, they might so play maybe. It. Oh, okay, but I know I've, I've popped in. Sunday nights, I'm in Duke's live chat. So okay. this is this is the this is that image we were talking about earlier about what I talked about from the ship. Yeah, and there's a Sasquatch yeah, no here. Babies. Sasquatch the babies, and then this is this is Penny right here. She's sort of the short one. Nothing. And there's a, a an a, an alien kind of looking person there, and then there's a little arrow. I don't know if you can see it, but it mm -hmm. goes to the far right, the far right uh, little infant, and that's the one she bonded with the most. But that's eight Sasquatch kids. And what I was say, thinking was that their numbers have dropped because they've been under this in, under attack for, you know, years. It's possible. I'm and, not going to say and no. They're, it's they're, not, trying, they're trying, they're trying to like, or, or they're trying to bring back more of a connection between the human uh, bred um, Sasquatch. Yeah. Because that, basically what that's saying is, um, basically what that's saying is that Sasquatch are half human. Yeah, you know they saying? absolutely are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I keep saying the same thing. I mean, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but you can't change the truth. And like when I was on Chris's show last night, I said this, and I I don't mean it to be rude or offensive, but I can't change what the truth is, and I can't put it in a little box to make it different so people can accept it. I can break it down so and put it in a soft, kinder way to, to tell them. So it's a little bit easier to accept, but I simply can't change it. And I wouldn't want to. I mean, that would be a lie and I'm not willing to do that. Yeah, but yeah. they are. They're half human. They really are. And Melba Ketchum's study was 100% correct. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Absolutely. So, Robin. And, yes. One other thing I I heard when I was making my coffee, you and Beans were talking and you were talking about these new cryptids showing up or whatever, or. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is, is the, is the one that uh, Mark Abel talked about that's, that's the upper body is kind of like a white humanoid. And then the bottom half is all furry, like, or all hairy, like Sasquatch. Is that I one of them? I hadn't talked to him about that one, but do I think it's possible? I absolutely do. Like I have gotten to the point with the different cryptids that I personally have seen. I, there's no, nothing off limits. There really isn't. Um, I had somebody see, talk about one the other day that I had never, ever heard of. It made no sense to me, but do I believe it's true? hundred percent believe it's true. They are getting more and more and more. And that doesn't mean they're all bad. Like this one that runs around here, it's not aggressive at all. It's never tried to do anything. All it does is eat. <laughs> you know, I mean, it eats and wanders around. It cloaks. It's you know, it's crazy. It looks like if you were to breed a rabbit and a kangaroo together, this is what you would get. Jeez. But yet it has, yeah. But yet it has abilities, and the back on the thing is like five foot off the ground or more. It's crazy looking. I don't know where it came from. Don't know what it is. It's nonviolent. It has the ability to cloak because I watched it cloak. It's moved through my bushes and up and down my pro uh, property line and into the woods. It's never hurt the animals. It's never hurt me. It's, I tried to mind speak with it and it didn't respond. It was very unresponsive, but it could hear it because when I talked to it, it looked right at me, turned its head and looked at me. So I do believe that it, they all have the basic same capabilities, but it's just living its life. Can I ask everybody here a question? What do you guys think does this rake thing is? Is it an interdimensional being or is it alien? Because I've seen one on a parkway one time yeah. that just Everybody's blew my mind. On my answer. Go ahead. <laughs> Everybody that I hear talk about the rake seem to think it's some kind of a cryptid or whatever. That's not my belief. I'm sorry. I think it's an ET. I just think it's okay. an ET. They look very much like the tall whites. I don't necessarily believe they are the tall whites, but they look very much like them. They seem to have similar abilities. And I think it's just an ET. Now, the, they are tall whites that live on this planet. That's been a fact for hundreds of years. So do I think that's what that is? I actually kind of do. I could be wrong. I mean, there's never been any blood tests done on it or anything. 
but I, I really just think it's the type of an ET that's been here. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, and it's funny you say that because I only seen it for, you know, a brief moment in, in my car driving along the parkway and the, the, the image, the, the vibe I got from it was that it was alien, that's but I, I wasn't I sure if it was alien <laughs> from extraterrestrial alien or alien interdimensional. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've seen two. Um, I lived and I haven't talked about this very often. Um, I lived in a place, what's happened with me most of my life is I get situated in a place and the foots have told me since I was a kid that there was something big, bad, and ugly that's coming after me because of my abilities to stop me. And I'll be in a place, I'll be set up, I'll be secure, years will go by, then all of a sudden the Sasquatch will come to me and say, you're moving because it found you, we have to move you. And this has been a pattern since I was young. And I was living at this one place and I was happy there. Everything was fine. And they said, listen, we, you've got to go. You've got to go. It found you. And I said, what are you talking about? No, it found you. So I start looking for a new place. I find a new place. I'm getting ready to move and I'm taking, it was only moving a few miles, but I had a vehicle full of things to take to the new place. I'm driving down the road and I see what people call the rake and it's running in the woods parallel to my car there was actually two and this thing grabbed a tree and literally threw it down in the middle of the road in front of my car i to this day don't know how by the grace of god i stopped the car in time and i backed up turned around and went back the other way and there were two of them and when we finally got out of there we were very lucky because it got to the house. I never physically saw it once we got to the house, but it went after the animals. It went after the kids. I don't understand why I wasn't affected by it. I don't understand that at all. Um, my friend's son was there. It put him right on the ground. He was screaming, grabbing his head, laying on the ground. He couldn't <coughs> stand up. My son is like, mom, help him, help him. And I'm trying to help him. I told my kid to get in the car. So he got in the car. We had the animals loaded. We actually left quite a bit of things at that house when we moved out because I wasn't going to risk everyone's safety. But what I saw that morning were what people call the rake. And to me, I didn't pick up cryptid energy on them. Like the first thing I do when I see any of these things is I do an energy read. I do that on people which has come in really helpful because as we know, there are ETs that take possession of people's bodies. And so they look very human and I've been attacked by them before. So I do like a scan on everything when I first see it. And I have this other freaked out ability where I can look at something and it may look like something, but I can see what it really is inside. And then I can do an energy scan on it and I can tell what it is inside. And so when I saw these things, I didn't find cryptid energy on them. I found ET energy. And yeah. that's why my belief is what it is. And I could be wrong. I don't ever claim to be right on everything. But that was my personal experience. No, and then when, when I was younger and we would see them, we just called them ghouls. You know what I mean? That's That was the name we had for them back in the 70s. <laughs> you know, I know, I'm an old guy back well, in yeah. the 70s, but, uh, but now they call it the rake, that. but oh, back. I didn't know what they were back then. And I really didn't get a, a, a feel for them. But, you know, yeah. now that I'm older and I had my ascension and all that other stuff, when I seen it, I got the vibe that it was definitely alien i just didn't know if it was alien extraterrestrial or interdimensional what do you what yeah, do you what do you, what do you probably, feel interdimensional I think, yeah i do i mean i i really feel like when i think about it and focus on it as far as coming down in a ship that's not what i get no me neither i, I yeah. think at one time do i believe they can go up in a ship i absolutely do 100 percent. i've been attacked too many times by ETs. Um, I've had good ones visit as well. I think there's more good than bad, but I believe in my heart of hearts, those that they call the rate can go into the dimensions. 
And there have been times where I'll be at home and I will get this vision of them and they're going in, they're opening a portal, you know, and they're going into it. And we, we know portals are anchored. Some portals can be opened at will. And, you know, I personally have seen the foots simply open up the side of a rock wall and walk into it. You know, there have been reports out of other countries of them opening a hole in the ground and jumping in. Yeah, so I've so got know, those reports, yeah. Yeah, so we know that the, it's possible. And I think that that's what these things they call the rake are. I don't believe they are a cryptid. No, um, me neither. I do believe that they are an ET, but I, I do agree with you that they can go between dimensions. I think if they wanted to go up in a ship, they could, but I think that they primarily live here. And they just move through the dimensions at will. Gentlemen, please give me give me your thoughts. Yeah, Alfred, I wanted to ask you about your. You said about an ascension. You said you ascend ascension. What 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 is your uh, what is your story about an ascension? <laughs> I thought okay, I was in bed sleeping one night, and I thought I was dreaming. To be honest with you, I thought it was a dream. And I was taken out of my body. I was having like an out of body experience. And I was beaten, brought up to the heavens on a rainbow bridge. That's the only way I could describe it. With the most brilliant colors that you've ever seen in your life. You, I, they were so brilliant that I can't even describe how beautiful they were. I mean, the, they were just like radiating love. And I, something was guiding me from behind and was lifting me up. And I didn't see it. I just heard it, you know, and it was saying, tonight's the night I'm going to give, tell you what the secrets of the universe are. So I was like, okay, oh, wow. you know. And as we're going up, I'm seeing images of Tesla and Einstein and Beethoven and Bach, and I'm seeing mathematical equations that I have no idea what they were. And I'm seeing musical notes. And I've been playing guitar my whole life, but I don't read music. Um, and I'm seeing all of this stuff, and I'm seeing all these geniuses going by me, Da Vinci and all of this stuff. And, I'm, and we're going higher and higher and higher and further and further out into the universe. And we're just going and going. And, you know, and I can see the earth below me, you know, as, as I'm rising, I can see my house. And then, you know, the earth, what it looks like from outer space. And then space and space was so beautiful. There was so many colors, you know, like we look up at the night sky, we just see darkness. But when I was out there, there were so many brilliant, different, beautiful colors, just unbelievable. I mean, it was so weird. And we reach a point where we stop ascending. And then the voice says, okay, I've showed you, I showed you what I what I wanted to show you, all the geniuses and of the of you know of our time. And we start to descend back down to, to the house. And it says, now I'm going to tell you the secrets. And it said the first secret is vibration. I was like, okay. And then it said the second secret was frequency. And I was like, okay. And we're getting closer and closer to the house. And Hassan told me the third secret because then there was three. And as we're getting closer to the house, I'm like, come on, you have to tell me that last thing. I don't want to wake up in my bed with only two out of three, you know? And it said the third thing was consciousness. See, it was vibration, frequency, and consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm like going back into my body, I say to this invisible force behind me that's guiding me, I say, Man, that was a weird dream. And it stops me. It doesn't put me back in my body. And it stops me. And it says, no, this is, this is not a dream. And when the snow melts in the backyard, <clears throat> you'll see, we'll leave you a sign. At that point, it was like January, February. We had like 16 inches of snow in the yard. A couple of weeks go by. Snow melts. And I have two yards. I have an immediate backyard. And I have a stone wall and I have a far backyard that leads up an old apple orchard hill. And so the snow was melting and I'm looking around for a sign. Didn't say what the sign was going to be. And I go behind my stone wall and there around one of the 
I don't even know what kind of tree it is, if it's a cedar, uh, cedar or what it is, um, is quartz crystal stones, the size of bowling balls set up around this tree. And I look at these, and I, I know for a fact, um, my kids were young. We, 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 we went through these woods back and forth from all my neighbor's yards and there are no quartz crystal stones in anybody's property on our property, neither my neighbors nor mine. And um, so I see these quartz crystal stones. And again, these are big stones, like the size of bowling balls. And the voice in my head says, touch the stone. So I touch the stone and I feel like an energy coming from the stone, you know? And then the voice says, now touch the tree. And I touch the tree and I felt the energy from the stone Oh, through my left side, through my body out and into the tree. But I also felt the tree was like pulsating, almost like a heartbeat, you know? And I felt this energy and I had no idea what was going on. I was not a metaphysical kind of guy. I took martial arts my whole life. I was never able to meditate. My mind just would never stop racing. I couldn't focus. And I called a friend of mine up. It was an off-worlder, and I said, what does this mean? And he said, dude, he said, whenever you have a question, the universe is giving you a direct line to the universe. Whenever you have a question, go sit on those stones barefoot, because I have to be grounded, he said, to the earth. Sit on the stones with my back against the tree, meditate, and then ask the question you, that you want, and the universe will give you an answer. That I have, you know, and that was it, you know, and I, and I've also, I've tried it. And the one time I tried it, my question was, how much does your intention play into everything? And the answer was, your intention is as important as everything else, the, the secrets that we told you, you know? So I always, when I say frequency, vibration, consciousness, I always throw intention in as well. And that was, that was the whole thing. And if those stones weren't there, I would have thought it was a dream, you know, and those stones are, are what validated that whole experience for me. That's wonderful. Wow. I don't know what it was. And then my friend, my friend, who's an off worlder, he said, you had an ascension, you know, the universe. I said, well, who was the person guiding me? You know, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't see anybody behind me, you know? And he said it was your my my guide was guiding me. Did you, I don't you know. say musical notes? Huh? Did you say you saw musical notes? Oh yes, I see musical notes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I see was... I seen mathematical equations, and I've seen all the greats from Einstein yeah. to Tesla yeah. to Da Vinci to I mean everybody all and it was like the universe's way of saying we Whenever they had a question, they asked us and we gave them the information. Because every single that, one of those persons I believe that. Say, I 100% every, believe that. Every single one of those persons, if you read their biographies, all say that they didn't discover what they discovered. It was given to them from yep. above. Yeah, every single I one of them. I want to say something about the colors. Let me, let me just say, I just want, hold, hold on a second. I just wanted to say quickly. Just well because it's related to this, and then go go Robin. But uh, I, when I was traveling through, I had an experience where I was traveling through all these different dimensions, and I distinctly remember seeing musical notes flying by me. So I found that wow. really interesting. When you said That's that. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was it was just wild, you know. Like just talking about, it, I got goosebumps going up my spine. Yeah, like like you know, like big notes just flying yeah, by. You're still connected, buddy. You're <laughs> still connected. Yeah, I guess you know. I, uh, I yeah. yeah. Look, I was thinking about. I I had a I had a planet, an actual planet, come and say hello to me one time. <laughs> she I just said hello, <laughs> and, and I'm I'm feeling this whole planet thing. You know, it's like imagine if another planet came real close to Earth and said hello. <laughs> so I'm still connected to that planet. That was like what ten, oh, 10 well, years. Ago. I want to wow. hear something. He talked about. Oh, you said something about the colors in space. Yes. Yes. That really hit home with me because I was in the house one night and I kept hearing it sounded, I know this sounds really crazy. Okay. It sounded <clears throat> like angels singing in my oh, wow. head. And I'm like, 
I mean, just that kind of a, a vocal to it. And I thought, what is this? And I, and then it stopped and something told me to go on the porch. So I went outside and it was dark out. And there in my front yard, 15 foot off the ground was what looked like an open portal. Oh, wow. In this open portal, it started out looking like space and stars. And all of a sudden it had all these colors, like pastel colors in it. And it hung there. I mean, I'm standing on, I was so stunned. I'm standing on the front porch. Normally I'm curious enough where I would get down and walk to it because I'm an idiot, but mm -hmm. I'm just standing there staring at it with my mouth open. And I did have the foresight to say, who are you? And they said, you showed me your world. Now we're showing you ours. Wow. And it was about as big around as a large tractor tire. And it's just hanging in the air about 15 feet off the ground. And I saw the stars and the sky and then all these gorgeous, beautiful colors in there. And then it was like somebody sucked it up through a straw and it was gone. Yeah. It was crazy. So when you mentioned the colors, it, it kind of really hit me. I was like, wow. Yeah. I see, you know, I seen a UFO one time coming home from work. Um, I seen it looked like, and it looked like to me, like in the car driving, it looked like you those big three foot sparklers you get on the 4th of July with different colors in them. And it was just spit and it was spitting out these different. And when I first seen it, the colors it was spitting out were like silver. Right. And I there happened to be an old um, deserted ski slope off the parkway. So I pulled into that parking lot because I wanted to get a better look at this craft. And I had a camera on me. Of course, the camera wouldn't work. And I'm sitting underneath this. And of course, I did a time check when I pulled into the parking lot because I want to make sure I didn't lose any time. And I'm sitting under this craft and it's spitting out these colors. And they're like, first it started silver, then it went to orange and then yellow and then blues and purples and violets. And they were so, the colors, and the only way I could ever describe these colors, like they were so pure. The colors were so pure that I couldn't, my brain couldn't comprehend how I was seeing the darker colors against the black ink sky. Like, how am I seeing the blues and the purples and the violets against that sky? But these colors were so pure. They just, they just lit up around that dark sky. It was, it was the most strangest UFO experience I ever seen. And the colors that were coming out of this craft were just mind boggling. And I had never seen colors that pure until I had the Ascension. I seen that craft in 2012. I had the Ascension maybe in 2000. And so, I mean, it was a long time, eight years in between. I seen colors like that ever again. And it was just, it was just That's crazy. Awesome. And then I said, you know what? This parking lot is big enough for a craft to land in. Maybe it's time to get in the car and go home. And I left and I made sure when I got home, I did a time check, but I didn't lose any time that night. <laughs> They would come down and land in my yard. It's like I couldn't go home because I was already home. And they, the one night I was outside, I was talking to someone that was not in the government, but worked alongside of the government, only he was on the good side. Mm -hmm. And he was giving me very important information to help the Sasquatch. And we were talking on the phone and it was like 10 o'clock 10 30 at night and I looked over and it looked like this oval shaped piece of lava you know how lava gl glows and that's what it was doing and as it got closer to the bottom of the craft it got a darker color and this thing came right down in the yard and I remembered everything up until it got about two foot off the ground and then I didn't remember anything. And it was like an hour and 45 minutes to two hours later. And I was still standing in the yard holding the phone, only there was nobody on it. And I was very disoriented and my mind was fully functioning, but my body was non-responsive. Mm. It was moving and responding very slow. And I looked to see who I had been talking to and I saw the guy's name. So I called him back and he says, Hey kiddo, where'd you go? I was talking to you. He said, then I lost you. So I thought your battery died. He said, I tried to call you back. I couldn't get you. And I said, I, I saw this thing and I don't know. And he said, well, it's okay. He said, call me tomorrow and you know, it'll be fine. 
I said, okay. So I hung up from the phone. I walked in the house like I was on autopilot. My kids were teenagers at that time. And I said, okay. You know, I said the normal traditional mom things in my head. I'm just like exploding and going, oh my God, what just happened? And I'm talking to myself, yeah. but out, out loud, I said to the kids, does everybody have showers, homework, snacks ready for tomorrow? Yeah, mom, we're all good. And I normally would stay awake till the kids went to bed. I went into my room. I took a shower, got into bed, and I just laid there staring at the walls. And I was in this fog for like three days. Wow. And the kids kept saying, mom, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. And I was making meals and picking up after them and driving them back and forth to school. But I was speaking very little. And I went to walk in the door on the third day and I walked back up the porch that I had walked up that night after the incident had happened. And it was like that trance was gone. And I'm on the ground, I'm hyperventilating and I have no clear idea why I'm hyperventilating. And I'm going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, they took me, they took me. I couldn't remember what they did, but I remembered them taking me. But it took three days for that fog to wear off. Yeah, it's the residual energy from the, it's their effect. We we had an experience one night where we believe we lost two hours of time. And we also, at the same night, we had something happen where our psychic told us it was, um, uh, what, what was how did she phrase it? She said it was a, a time space continuum. Like mm -hmm. the people we thought we heard weren't going to be there till the following day. It was a crazy night, but. At the, at the end of the whole investigation, we were, we were all, we either all had injuries like fat lips or black and blues. No one fell and got hurt. Yeah. But we also, we were, all of us were also loopy for like three days. I yes, remember yes. going to work, being able to function, but I had to focus mm -hmm. on every single thing I did to make sure yeah. I did everything correctly, you know? Yep. And yeah, I it was taken loopy multiple, multiple times. And like the last time was I have, there's been two times since then, but I can't really, I'm not convinced that they took me. I think they did something, but I don't know that they took me, but last May when they, when I was taken, it was really odd because it was the most traumatic, but yet they were, I felt like they were filled with love. I don't think they did anything to hurt me. Um, when I remembered them, I actually remembered them in my room the next night, I knew they had done it in the morning because it had, we had a flash of light come in the room and then it was quiet. And I felt like I was going to crawl out of my skin. Like I was mm -hmm. that agitated and Pat wanted to stay awake. And I said, no, you've got work, go to bed. You can't do anything anyway, as far as, you know, to be able to stop it. I've got this. And they took me and it was about probably, I want to say two o'clock. And then I woke up very confused, very disoriented. Mom, my lower part of my pajamas were on inside out. Cell phones were damaged. Tablets were damaged. There was just a lot of crazy, crazy things. My slippers were like they had been thrown all over the place. It was just really weird. But I was okay. And then as that night progressed, I remember them being in my room, but I felt nothing. This is the crazy part. I felt nothing but love from them. And they, but I remember them being there, but there was one that like waved his hand across in front of them. And then on my floor, it looked like planets. Mm -hmm. it, and they were all black, but they were planets that were like in a shape. There's what was it? Five or six of them that were there. It was really weird. The only thing that was traumatic about it, and this really makes no sense. I've been working on it for a year and still haven't got much out of it. <laughs> it was where it wasn't missing time. I've had missing time. I get, they do that with me all the time. The cryptids have done it. The ETs have done it. It wasn't missing time. I did not exist. I literally, it was not that I was taken somewhere. I didn't exist in time and space in that moment. That to me was the most terrifying thing I've ever had to endure because it's one thing to know that you've been taken on a ship or you've been taken here or whatever, but to know that you absolutely did not exist. No, well, that, that, that's really cool. That's the coolest place to be, even though it's terrifying because 
if you go into no time and no space, the only way you can go into no time and no space is you have to not exist because you, yeah. if you exist, then you're in time and space. So, so you have to dissolve and there's this whole void yeah. that contains everything that, and nothing. Yeah. Once that shock that first night wore off, I'm, I've been okay with it, but it was really odd because that night I, again, I still wasn't stressed about it. It's happened multiple times, you know, not a big deal. And I was watching TV and I heard a voice say to turn on this certain movie. And I'm like, why? I don't want to watch that movie. No, watch it. So I had to rent the damn thing to get it. And there was in there, there was a woman that had a flash of light from a ship come into a room and then she was abducted. And as soon as I, I still to this day, I haven't watched the movie that I rented because as soon as I saw that part, it was like a trigger. And I started hyperventilating and crying. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? I don't remember being hurt. I don't remember feeling pain, this kind of stuff. No, you know, I haven't been afraid of it in a long time, but I was bawling and, and carrying on. And that's when I got the full impact that I did not exist. And so then the next day I got the visuals of the this cat is driving my computer crazy. Um, <laughs> I, I got the visual of them in my room and then showing me these planets. And I said, and by then I was calm. It was like this blast where I hyperventilated just like it did when I was taken the one time and it didn't last long. And then I was perfectly calm, but I couldn't sleep for three days. I literally went almost 72 hours without sleep other than like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there after this encounter. And I finally, I said, I feel love from you. Like, I don't feel fear. I don't feel just nothingness. Like I actually feel compassion and I feel love from you. So why, why did this happen? And I was told because there was something to kill you. And the only way to protect you was to make it so that you did not exist. But you still exist in consciousness. Yeah. So, so yeah. you did still exist. Right. But yeah. it was weird that's I amazing. Said, you know, did you take me on a ship? Did you take me on a planet? And they said, we took you into non-existence is what I was awesome. told. That's yeah, crazy. That's, that's, that's amazing. Cool. Brian yeah. Brian has an announcement. He said uh, we need more questionable people. Yeah, and we got some questionable people oh. with some questions. Oh, oh, oh is, I'm here. Was, Let's do this. I think it's he says qu questions people. Yeah, there's, there's question. <laughs> it's not questionable. They want some questions. So may, may, may I, I can I can I present one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, from Chris Deems, Robin, have you ever picked up on anything on the Mothman? Um, a little. I haven't really focused a lot on Mothman. Um, I did a couple of times, and I think that I don't think he's the nicest of sorts, but I also don't think that he's mean. I think he's just not happy, and this makes no sense to anybody but me, but he's not happy with himself. Like, he's very conflicted, almost like he's trapped in a situation he doesn't want to be trapped in. Do I think that they're real? I absolutely 100% do believe that they are real. And years ago, I met somebody that actually did research on the Mothman and had had a couple of sightings. But yeah, I think they're very misunderstood. I think they're very confused. I think they're very misunderstood. And to me, that's one of the few cryptids that I really feel sad and remorse when I pick up any vibe on him. How does the guy describe them? The woman that I saw that had seen it said that the one that she saw was about six feet in height, very broad, had the red eyes, just, you know, kind of like the traditional thing. She was doing a complete study on them. And I met her accidentally through Igor. And I never saw her after that. We had were visiting with her that day. Okay, we got another question. What are your feelings on dogmen? I think dogmen are not as bad as what people think they are. I think there's several variants. And I think that some that are extremely aggressive are variants that were created through the government. And I think that's why they were made that way. They were made to be aggressive. They are much more stoic than a Bigfoot is, you know, some of them do have a sense of humor, but like most of your, your Sasquatch all have a sense of humor. I mean, they're just, they have a warped sense of humor, but they have a sense of humor. 
your dogmen can be funny at times and, and, you know, will laugh at certain things, but they're much more stoic. They don't have that need to have to have contact with us. They like to guard, you know, they'll protect the woods, they'll protect the forest. And, you know, they've been very helpful to me over the years. They've been very kind to me. They're not something you want to piss off. They're not as tolerant as per se a Sasquatch is. They, there are a few that like to come forward and have contact with people, but I feel like most of them are just more happy, you know, in their own little isolated groups and doing their own little things. Okay. But yeah, I don't one. have, I don't have a problem with dogmen at all. One more. Uh, have you, and this is from Larry Hollenbeck. Okay. Have you ever talked with animals as in maybe a dog, thought wise, not verbally? Always. Always. I have since I was a small child. I had a very dear friend of mine that years ago, they were babysitting a turtle and I did not live near them. I was about five hours away from them. And they called and they said, you know, we're watching our sister's tur my sister's turtle and the turtle's sick. I don't know what's wrong with it. Can you talk to the turtle? And I talked to the turtle and said, this is the areas that are causing problems. This is what you need to do. And they said, okay, I said, get it to the vet tomorrow. You know, I'm not a vet. So they took it to the vet and exactly what I said, the turtle said was wrong with it was what was wrong with it. And it lived. But <laughs> well, I talked to my dogs all the time. Absolutely. I talked to the, the dogs, any animal. Yeah. My dogs have no problem mind speaking. In fact, yesterday I met a very, very nice person that had contacted me and just wanted to ask a couple of questions. And we were speaking on the phone and he was telling me about his two little dogs and one of them popped up and said, tell him, I just like to play with my little red ball. That's all I want is my, she and showed me a picture of a very small red ball. So I said that to him and he's like, oh my gosh, yeah, she has a little red ball. She loves that thing. And I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, so yeah, absolutely. How, uh, how complex can their thoughts be or their, I mean, uh, can they carry on like a, a an educated, you know, to what we would say, educated I conversation with you? I think to a degree, yeah. There, I mean, I don't sit there and talk like paragraphs on paragraphs, you know, like that, but ask a question, get a response. Yes, 100%. Um, if I see one isn't acting, you know, we, as everybody knows, I have 17 dogs in my house. And so if I, I know everybody's mannerisms, behaviors, who likes what, that kind of thing. And if somebody doesn't seem off, first thing I do is like, okay, what's going on? You know, and they'll tell me if it's an emotional thing, if it's a physical thing, if it's a physical thing, I usually have things here to take care of it or whatever. So, I mean, yeah, you can carry, you can talk to them. I mean, you're not going to be like, I'm talking with you right now and having this three hour conversation, <laughs> but they'll answer your questions that, you know, same thing with trees. We have a tree out front. That tree will talk all day long and twice on Sunday, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Gotcha. Hey, uh, by the way, Alfred, I, I asked uh, Robin a question, and uh, so do you have any uh, do you have any questions about your relationship with your Sasquatch or what where you're headed or anything like that? Do you have any personal things you'd like to ask her? No, not really. Just you know, um, He's pretty in tune with what's going on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I am too, but I, but you know. But I like another. No, I mean, if I had, uh, you know, Robin, Robin knows if I have a question for her, I don't hesitate to reach out to her. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm pretty good right now where I'm at with my uh, life and everything going on in it. So um, I feel like uh, my world is in harmony and um, I'm pretty good with that. OK, fair enough. And he knows how to get me. <laughs> I'm just needy. <laughs> I, just, Brian, I love you <laughs> but you know what what you what you told me wasn't anything that i didn't already know but it, it was very nice to hear it from another source so it yeah, really touched it's, nice to you get it. it's nice to get validation and i think absolutely as crazy as all this can be and it can i mean let's be realistic this isn't for the faint of heart okay no. this stuff gets really deep even Pat and I look at each other and say, okay, you got the same thing I got. We just saw this. This is real, but like either, you know, pinch me, poke me, whatever. So I know I'm not living in the dream somewhere, but as crazy as an intense as it can be, it's always good for that validation. I don't yeah. think 
you know, you can ever be over validated. And it's like, I've seen them millions of times. I've been, you know, toe to toe with them. I've had one touch me, you know, I felt the hair, it had longer hair and it, it came down onto my wrist and I felt it on my wrist. And all of these incredible experiences that I'm very grateful for. And I still will say, okay, you guys have, you know, I've seen you darting across the yard and I've seen you moving through the shadows and, you know, making noises and tapping on the window and that kind of thing. I need a visual. It's been a little while, you know, ju you just want to keep validating it. And I know for me personally, every time I see them, it's like the first time all over again. Like you are so mesmerized by that. It's just like you are drawn and sucked into it. Well, I mean, you saw the reaction that RV had when I asked it. Yeah. I mean, he had me in tears. Like he was just lighting me up with, uh, with loving brotherly confirmation. Yeah. So. And I was, Mr. Beans missed that, by the way, I was crying on air, Mr. Beans, you missed it. <laughs> yeah. And I think he was having a cigarette. <laughs> But I mean, I was like the other day, I was extremely stressed, extremely stressed. And they know when I get stressed and they hate it. And then one of the ones I'm very close to is like, it's going to be okay. And then all of a sudden I felt this enormous wash of calmness. And I was like, you know what? Let it go, whatever. You know, because they just give you that calmness where the things that get you to the point where you just feel like you can't take another breath. And then they have this wonderful way to calm you into like, you know what, it's going to be fine. I'm still waking up tomorrow. You know, what's going to happen in the universe is going to happen and you just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there are no coincidences and oh, uh, never. the never. universe is amazing. Yeah, it really is. And yeah, I will say you. this though, I've had two um, ET experiences where I was being abducted once by the tall grays, once by the small grays. And with the tall grays, I, I was having an outer body experience watching them. With the tall, with small grays, I was still in my body watching them. But both times, I didn't feel, I couldn't get a vibe from them. There was no vibe. I got no vibe from either one. Yeah, it's almost you know? like they were soulless. Yeah, I had I could not get a feel for them whatsoever. And I was wondering if anyone else has ever had that experience where yep. they experienced these creatures and then it was just no like no energy I, or anything coming off them. When I was four years old, the ship that they took me on, I remember every single detail that I was on there. I remember the glyphs that were around the door. I remember the machine. They had a human laying on this machine. And I remember what <laughs> they had with the walls, the floors, all of it. And there was sh the small grays were there, but they also mm -hmm. had tall grays. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I mean, I tried and tried to get a read on them. And I am able to read on things from the past as well as coming in the present. I can get reads on them. Um, and I had the same experience. I mean, it, it's just like they're vacant of any emotion of any kind. It, it was creepy. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, it was the first time I ever experienced something that I couldn't get a vibe off of. You know, I call it a vibe. Um, everything yeah. else that I've done, you know, whether it was, we're investigating, you know, paranormal activity, UFOs or Bigfoot or whatever, uh, if something shows up, I can get a feel for it, you know? Right. But these, yeah, this, these things had no, no vibe to them whatsoever. No, nothing. It was just Do you like think do you think they put a shield up or is it just their nature? Well, I know they can put a shield up and energy signatures don't lie in energy. You know, it's really hard to disguise that. And with them, they, there was no reason to put a shield up. I was a four-year-old little kid oh, okay. and they were coming up to me and they were mind speaking with me and they were, you know, taking me in all these different areas of the ship and there's just nothing there. It's like there was no emotion, there was no vibe, there was the energy, there was an ET energy. I mean, I was reading energy and I didn't even know that's what I was doing. And, but I agree with, with Al, it, there was literally nothing there. Yeah, it felt it, like it, it was reading a tin can, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, like they had their void of all emotions, feelings, anything. Even it's consciousness. Like I didn't get any consciousness no, connection. No, I didn't no. get any emotional connection. No. Just nothing. 
No, nothing. I know they were connected with each other because of the way they moved. In yes. Their and I know they could there. read my, hear my thoughts because I tested them, you know, and yeah. I, and I caught them reading my thoughts. So I know they could read my thoughts. They can hear my thoughts, but um, there was just no energy, any, no vibe coming off. It just, it was, yeah. it was just the only thing I ever experienced that I, I mean, that I couldn't get a feel for. Yeah. You know, Larry Hollenbrook just made a comment on that. And I was actually just thinking of asking you the same thing. And that is, could they be artificial life forms without emotions? Like, it's absolutely. Possible. Absolutely. You I know, know, like robotic or something or, or not, not organic. Well, I do know. Like, or it could, a lot could of be times, an ability too that they have. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times. If, if, because they know they know about vibes is all they have to do is tune into your vibe at this exact same frequency as you are and you wouldn't tell you couldn't tell because it would feel like you you know that's mm, interesting there has to be a difference there has to be a difference in the vibrational frequency for you to be able to feel, feel it. it interesting yeah. interesting consciousness, interesting. Is, consciousness interesting. is the feeling of energy if their energy is matching yours exactly there's no consciousness feel. there yeah Oh, wow. Yeah. That was deep. Wow. Did, yeah. I, I'm so like, happy you guys invited me on. Own, Another pearl of wisdom from the Frank uh, Oliver Beans. <laughs> but they also, when they send them down, and I know this for a fact because I've, I've witnessed it and experienced it, they, a lot of times when they come down and they show up like in our room or like one day out in my yard or whatever, they literally they'll send down like a drone it looks just like them it's almost like a holographic thing that can fully function and fully do all these things but it's not their actual essence if that makes any sense yeah penny peas remember, remember penny peas mr beans yeah that's i just showed when you were getting your coffee i was showing the that picture of her yeah, that was incredible right. incredible right no i saw it no i'm I, you showed the picture after it came back but anyway, yeah. But Penny P well, said I wasn't, I wasn't paying any attention to you at all. <laughs> I know. I only pay attention to the guests. We don't pay attention to each other. We're just trying to get trying to find a space to interject a question. Uh, Rob, but anyway, <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> Penny P has asked, "Can you teach MindSpeak?" Yes. I I I don't call it teaching. I help people tap into it. Oh yeah, we um, were going to get together and do some of that stuff too. Because yeah. I kind of get, I kind of get them. We I, all I, know I mind speak. We all know mind speak. Call it, it's called thinking, but there's just another vibration of thinking. Yeah, well, yeah no, it, most it, people can already get it. They just don't know how to tap into it. There's They're different versions it. of it too. Yeah. Let me just say that. Let me just say this before. There's different versions of it too. Like I get thought placement all the time. I get energy. You know, there's different types of mind speak. But I think people, when they say mind speak, they're referring to the classic voice in your head, which yeah, I have had, which I which I have had. But it's not something that I can do like regularly. You know, right. it, it's just kind of random. As any, it can come as letters spelled out. It can come yeah. as a picture. It can come out as a video. It can come as an emotion, a feeling, yeah. a sense of knowing. There's a massive variety of ways that you get it. And my belief is that we can all do it. It's a matter of do we all know how to tap into it, to recognize it? It's not about teaching people to mind speak. It's about helping people recognize it. Yeah. And I've done that with just a ton of people. Absolutely. Like I definitely have mind speak. Everybody does. Like you said, Well, yeah. but, uh, but you know, the classic, the classic, like one-on-one -on -one conversation, which I, I don't think it's any higher form of mind speak. It's just a variant. They're all, no, they're all, they're all energy. They're all powerful, but everybody's going to receive it different. And I get it in a multitude of ways. You know, I mean, it just, like I said, it's all about not teaching people how to, it's teaching people to recognize it. Yeah. Like our re mind spoke with me one time. It didn't go very yeah. well. You taught me. I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. <laughs> for everybody. Okay, go ahead. Um, what's the difference when you hear a little voice in the back of your head telling you one thing or another, you know, and compared to when you touch something and you're getting a visual in your mind's eye, 
Are those both mind speaks? Are they different variants of it? Yeah. Yes. I think so. I consider that mind speak because it comes in all forms. There might be technical words for it. Like I said, I can do all kinds of stuff. I don't necessarily know what they're called because I just do it. It's just always been a part of who I am. And I've not had anybody teach me or show me or look it up to find out what it's called. It just happens. In my mind, that is the same thing. It it's still a type of communication to give you information, which is yeah. what I consider telepathy and mind speak to be is just a form okay. of communication so when you so teach mind call, speak do you clairvoyant if you see a picture in your head of something that's clairvoyant if you hear mm -hmm. words that's clairaudient oh okay wow okay i didn't know that okay yeah, see, yeah i'm not not that. familiar with what it's the same thing, it's the same right. thing really. what, what's the feelings one called that that that's the one i get most sentient clear sentient what? yeah that's my strongest one and that's like, like, like what I would is that what I would consider like a vibe, an energy vibe? Yep, yep, yep. Or or Holy like or crap. like when I'm on the show, when I'm on the show talking about stuff, and it's happened a number of times today, it happens every show. Uh I'll get a an energy nudge confirmation, you know, that I'm speaking the truth or that they're with me. Or when when uh Robin was talking about RE and uh about you know my family connection, the love they have for me, whatever. I mean, I got that whole body wow, you, blow, you guys are blowing my mind telling me all of this stuff today holy well, cannoli thing, mike has to send me a list of what it's all called because like i keep saying just because I, <laughs> I have yes no he has to send me a list too absolutely yeah I, I've done it. I never remember a time i haven't done it so i never really investigated what it was called it's just part of who i am it's part of what i do and i've never really Push the envelope farther and said, "Okay, what is the technical term for it?" So when yeah, you teach either. mind speak, when you teach mm -hmm. mind speak, are you teaching just uh, are you teaching just the classic conversation back and forth variety no. or? No, I teach people how to connect with whatever it is they are getting. I try to show them, tell them examples so they know what I'm talking about so that that way they can kind of zero in and say, oh yeah, that's happened to me. Okay, well, that is a form of mind speak. Everybody gets it differently. Some people get all versions of it. I don't know why I get all the different versions. Maybe because I was supposed to help other people. I don't know, but you still have it. So when I do it, I talk to people about a very different amount of range of things that can be connected to it and try to zero in on how they're getting it. Usually just talking to them helps me pick up on how they get it. And then I talk about recognition of multiple ways because I don't, I think it's not fair to talk to somebody about just the basic mind speak because that's not maybe the kind that that person would receive. Right. And then I'm out of any help to them at all. So I try to do it as an overall range and I always go into you know, it can be any of these things. And then I go and I say, okay, there's not one of us on this planet that has not been in a room and felt somebody that they know come into a room behind them. And while you didn't hear them with your ears, you felt that they were coming into the room. That's mind speak. That's yeah. a form of communication. It's a form of mind speak. You're reading that person's energy as they come in the room. There's also people that have a partner, a spouse, friend, whatever, where you automatically know what that person is going to say before they say it. Right. As Al stated, there are no coincidences. That's mind speak. Your brain will pick up energy, vibrations, mind speak, telepathy, you know, all of that before you are able to verbalize it and process it. Your energy and your body will pick that up before that. So it's all just a progression of how it all filters through. Well, I'd like to perfect, perfect some versions of it a little better so that I can wake Mr. Beans up in the middle of the night. <laughs> if, you, if, you want me to, if you want me to if you want me to i can teach everybody how to do mind speak right now okay do it let's go go for it okay there's i'm, this, I'm in there's this there's a one component of it is what's called casting a voice casting a voice you ever heard of that no. everybody everybody does this when they're little it's like when you play with toys and you talk to the toys and you give the toy a voice so you see these two little guys this is like a pen and this is a marker and then you cast the voice you, you talk about from the pen so, I, so you say hi how are you i'm fine 
What's your name? My name is Marker. What's your name? Oh, my name is Penn. You see what I'm see what I'm doing there? I'm carrying on a conversation and casting my voice as if as if the pen is talking in pen voice and the marker is talking in the mark voice. If you and kids do this all the time, that's how they play. And if you if you practice this, then you can actually talk to a tree or you can talk to the wall or you can talk to an ET or whatever, because you're tuning your mind into talking uh, with not just your voice. You see what I'm saying? So just practice with little little uh, sock. You can do it with sock puppets too. Hi, hi, what's your what's your name? You see what I'm saying? That's all you got to do. It's not super, super complicated. And, and little, every kid knows hard. how to do it. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not a complex thing. It's recognizing things as you get them. But we have been taught from the time we're little that these things don't exist. And so it's almost like you have blinders onto it. And then when it happens, because we've been taught it doesn't exist, your mind just blocks it like it's not real. That's why people see Sasquatch and they can't believe what they saw because we've been told that they don't exist. Mm -hmm. If everybody thought they existed, just like, you know, everybody just knew a deer was there. You see a deer and it's like, oh, look at the deer. Let it be a Sasquatch. And it's like, no, I didn't really see that. So a lot of people that aren't open enough, it just shuts it down in their brain that it never happened to begin with. You know, mind speak is not a complicated thing. It's not hard. It's just a matter of realizing it. Is yeah. that little voice, is that little guy on your shoulder? You practice and, and uh, you practice casting your voice because, you know, we're used to we, we're used to just talking and listening to our own head. And there's more in there. There's more in your own head for that matter. Yeah, yep, I was going to ask, is that, is that little guy on your shoulder, the one guy on your one shoulder, the, 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 the guy who's telling you can't do anything? You're not good enough and whatever and the guy who's telling you you're good enough and you can do this is that your conscience or is that mind speak in a, in a form or both i have to me that was demons. yeah i mean it's more of a mind speak you've got you know the one telling you one thing and the other telling you another and you have to choose whether you're going to listen to it or not demons and angels yep yeah well, I think I think uh, you're going to be swamped with people wanting, and 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 you know, and 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 you're you don't charge very much. I think it's what free. I don't charge anything. <laughs> <laughs> I charge zero, nothing. No, um, if you know, I've had people that if they want to donate something to me, that's in their heart. Then I always am appreciative of that. But no, I don't charge anything. Never. That's like, that's like people saying, "Can you teach me how to be psychic?" Everybody's psychic. You couldn't. You couldn't Absolutely. move your hand like that if you weren't psychic, because your mind. You, you know, there's, there's a there's a psychic impulse that's yeah. telling your body to move. Everything about happening. you is psychic. Is psychic. That's the, the the main factor of consciousness. Yes. Psychic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So what's been happening around your place lately, Robin, with the Sasquatch and? What's going it's on? Pretty much the normal craziness. You know, they run around the backyard, they look in the windows, they tap on the walls. The other night it was really bizarre though, because like I'm in South Carolina, so our house obviously is built off the ground because of hurricanes. And I'm not down by the coast, but it's still built up about five foot off the ground. So we have this huge crawl space under it that's all bricked in. And when we first moved here, they would take the door down and they'd go under the house. And I threw just a fix. I didn't want snakes getting under there. And so Apparently one must have got under there the other night because I went in to use the restroom and they were talking up through the vents. <laughs> like I could, I'm sitting there trying to use the restroom and they're talking and they're chanting up under the vent. And I'm like, I knew I was sick. And they, when I'm sick, they tend to get outside the windows and as close to me as possible. And they chant and I can feel the vibration come from them. And they try to do a lot of healing work on me. And I was like, okay, but can we not work on me while I'm going to the bathroom? (laughs) I mean, when the kids were little, they followed me in the bathroom. The dogs and cats followed me in the bathroom. Now the Sasquatch are in the bathroom. And I'm like, good Lord. Uh, That's funny. they're, They're loud and proud. They, you know, still getting into, they don't. I'm not having like prowl. I don't have problems with them. They're pretty good. I mean, we had a period where the youngster climbing up on the roof and I took care of that. And, you know, they still do the funny things. They go, I have three large pens for that have feral cats in them outside that I feed and care for as I can catch them. That way it keeps them safe from the coyotes and stuff. And I keep these gigantic buckets of cat food out there. So they have it at all times. And Robin, 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. And I'll go out there and there's a top on there and the pine cones can't get through the fencing and they can't get through the top. I'll go in there and every bucket will be empty of food and every bucket will be filled with pine cones. <laughs> and it's like, if you just want food, just tell me you want it. You know, I mean, I don't care. I, I put buckets out in the yard for the feral cats and I know I've, I'm on the porch and we've got one of the kids out here. His name is Zerky and his, he'll come up on the porch and I have glass around my door and I'll see his black head bending down to get the cat food and he'll eat the cat food. So yeah, we go through like a hundred pounds of cat food a week. Can I ask you a question pertaining to, to my wife? If you sure. Take off. I love so your she, wife. She's, sure. yeah, she's been having some, well, she always has amazing connective experiences. Uh, and I, I could name a number that very similar to this, but this is an ongoing thing for her. So it's not kind of unusual. But anyway, the other day, uh, she was uh, riding riding her bike uh, in an area where it's just kind of remote, and there's woods uh -huh. all around. And there's no no people around, and uh, she uh, was thinking, I, I have to, uh, I guess I have to write my tax. What, so yeah, what were you thinking? I have to write my tax. You want to talk? To that? Sure. I'll let her sit in the in the captain seat and tell about the noise too in the book. <laughs> Sure. Hey, sweet well, girl. How are you? Hi. Fine. Uh, I don't know. There I am. Um, I was riding my bike along a bike path down by the river, and it's pretty desolate there. And um, I stopped to, I heard my phone jingle, and so I stopped to see who had called. It was my sister, so I called her back, and we were talking. And I was um, telling her that I had a lot of uh, weird Canadian forms to be filling out and special cross-border taxes to be doing, and I was going to be filling out a lot of forms and all of a sudden I heard this big clunk and there was nothing on this aluminum bench next to me when I sat down but right behind the bench was a pencil you know with the metal eraser tip on it yeah no eraser. so it was an empty one and it was really loud it was like almost too loud to be the pencil tip that clunked it but that's the only thing that was there and it couldn't have fallen off the back of the seat because it was slanted like that with a big gap and it wasn't on the bench are you all right Okay. Yeah, oh, I'm so, sorry. So my, that was my daughter. That's okay. I just thought it was interesting that I was talking about filling out forms and a pencil appeared. They were trying to help you. They were trying to help you. <laughs> I but just thought I, it was hysterically no, funny. No, they do. <laughs> but see, that things like that happen all the time. And that was just, you have, they say that you are very peaceful. And you, they get peace that. from you. They get peace from your heart. And which is a good thing. And so they were in turn helping you. I do want to point out something that I got and it's not the greatest, but I would be remiss if I didn't give you the information Go ahead. When you're in that desolate area. I want you to please be careful right now. There seems to be a large black male wandering around there that does. He's not in that area. He's not with a clan huh. and everybody's going to come down on me for saying this. He finds you attractive. And that can be dangerous. So right. I, he's not planning on doing anything, but he is kind of fixated on you. So when you're going through there alone, Ari's clan will get him out of there, I'm sure. Somebody or whatever. Oh, yeah. clan yeah. Well, I yeah. just, I felt oh, like somebody but, was definitely with me. Yeah. There. The one that gave you the pencil was very nice. He was there. Actually, he was there to keep an eye on you because of this black one. Huh. Okay. So you had a guard with you. So that's a really good positive thing. So then you're talking about doing these other things. And he was like, okay, well, hell, I'm already here anyway. Here's your, you know, now you can do your paperwork. <laughs> but I well, do want, I, the reason I'm saying that is not to frighten you or sound like a crazy person, but to make you aware. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm always aware of everything around me. I'm always looking around to make sure there's not yeah, any no, he's not danger coming to towards me or behind me. Yeah, he's in his 20s. He's like 23 years old and he's black, tall. Oh. He's not real wide. He's more, he's muscular, but he's a leaner male mm -hmm. and he is not supposed to be there. They said he's not welcome in that area. Huh. He's a loner. Okay. So I'm sure they will run him out, but I do want you to be careful. <laughs> well, well I, I'm sure that Ari's plan would, would be monitoring that. They wouldn't let anything well, happen. The one that actually handed you the pencil was a, a tall male. He's tan. He's like a light, dirty tan color. Okay. Um, and he was there to keep an eye on you. He was sent to, they said he was sent to shadow you to make sure you stayed safe. 
Yeah, well, I, I know I felt like like somebody was with me on that ride. And I and slightly after that happened, I mean, it was a big thunk aluminum. Yeah. I almost thought it was maybe a rock that was being pitched. But then I looked around to see if there was a rock and there was- He was trying to help you. Pencil, a pencil right there. And I thought, that's so funny. I was just talking about, I have so many forms to fill out. And here, here, <laughs> pencil shows, here this pencil shows up. So, he could have tapped yeah. your chair too. Or the, he could have tapped the chair with his finger. Oh, it was so metallic sounding though. Like it was like metal on metal. A, a, oh, okay. It was something dropped tell, right there for sure. Tell her about the, oh. Oh, she, you, she also heard heard whoever it was probably, or maybe it was the other male, somebody in the bush. Definitely. That definitely. was probably was the a, black one. That was probably was just, the black one. Yeah, I was just starting to say that, that slightly after that on the left where all the trees and in between yeah. the river and where I was. Yeah, I heard I heard a big branchy sound right there and, and the, there was nothing. The tan one's name is, Bion, is yeah. Bannon or Bon, B-A-I-N. He was the tan one that was with you and he said he will not let him hurt you. Oh. I, I don't get that this black male is intentionally mean or aggressive. I feel like the emotions off of him is he's lonely. He's very oh. lonely. And when you rode by, he became fixated on you. And so just, it's one of those things that nothing you can do about it. Just be aware. All right. Thanks. But this Bayon is, was with you. He said we would not have let her come to harm. Is Bayon, is he know, well, they all kind of know each other in a telepathic yeah. way. Yeah. Just, is he closely connected with Ori in the family or does he? I think he's part of that clan. I think he's one of the guards that they use within that clan. I don't know that he's tight, tight, tight with Ari personally, but they're all part of that same collective clan. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you tell them about the the, the, the earplug? The earplug, yeah. <laughs> the reason why the pencil made me laugh about the pencil is because it brought to mind about three weeks before Brian and I were hiking in a place I had never been before, but um he started he, Brian started singing and I was just really appreciating like hearing the birds and stuff and and I didn't want to say stop singing so there's a hill coming up and I said I'm just gonna run up to the top of the hill kind of just to distance myself <laughs> from his beautiful singing and so oh I God. I jogged up the hill and I was thinking the whole time ah, I can't tell him I can't tell him to be quiet because his singing is like <laughs> But I really just wanted to hear birds and quiet and solitude and stuff. And, and I was thinking this whole thing while I'm running, what am I going to do? I feel awful now that I've like separated myself from him. And it was not a great intention, really. You know, it was kind of selfish. And and I was thinking all of this. I just round the top of the hill and there's a bright orange earplug sitting, <laughs> sitting <laughs> right oh, on the trail. Hysterical. <laughs> I know, and I just had to laugh. So I picked it up, and I thought, I can't even tell him this. Like, like <laughs> tell him about the earplug, you know. So, oh but I God. found that when the when the pencil thing happened, I did tell him about the earplug because I thought this is kind of tied into that a little bit. How these, yeah, it is. absolutely. They you better believe that the clan calls you the peaceful sparrow. I don't know why, but they call you the peaceful sparrow. Uh, Our each well, clan, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. But well, they I'll say it with love. What do they what do they call me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I don't know. They did, they've well, never, you know what? I will I be know. honest and tell you, they don't normally tell me what they call people. That's why well, ask them. I'm interested to see what they what they call me. Ask them what they call me. <laughs> the, the... <laughs> I'm trying to, they call I'm asking them right now. Ari's <laughs> cracking up. He says, You're my little brother. But they, that's not what they call you in the clan. I said, what do they call you in the clan? And they said, honored one. Oh, jeez. That they're you honored to again. have you, uh, that they're honored to have you as their little brother. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Beans wants me to start calling. I know he does. He likes people who cry on the show. Good for ratings. <laughs> Good for ratings. <laughs> the oh, honored my one. Oh my god. When we had three, we had three, three, three guys, three guys, three grown men crying on the show. And, and, yeah. Isn't, isn't Ari loves Zap and uh, they all got all teared. Isn't he so funny but deep too? Yeah, he's deep he's individual. very deep. He's oh, very, very deep. Blasted me. Yeah, very emotional, but he's got that quirky little sense of humor too. Yeah. 
he just seems very wise. He's a very wise one. Yeah. He just, he's just blasting me with love. Yeah. <laughs> well, ever since you started talking about him, I'm getting a, a, a pressure in my temples. And I mm-hmm. kind of feel like my, um, like, you know, when you have water in your ear and you can't hear anymore. I'm getting all this. I'm getting all this pressure in my temples, and my ears are like I can barely hear anymore. I don't know what's going on. I never had this happen before on a in uh you know in an interview or anything like that. So I don't know if he's blessed in me with anything or not, but that's just Ari, something. Ari wants everybody to feel the love. He always does. He's all about love and peace. When I talk to people about him or show them this picture or any of that kind of stuff. It's very common for him to reach out to people and they can feel him. He'll he'll connect with them like he did with you right now. Yeah. I, I I'd like to be ha- I'm interested to know how many Sasquatch watch our show because I have a feeling that not only does yeah. not, not only does the IRE clan, but all these people who are watching the show, their Sasquatch are watching them watch. You know what I'm saying? hundred percent. They look through their eyes. They There's hear a lot. There's probably more Sasquatch watching the show than there is human. Yeah. They literally <laughs> will listen to your thoughts. So as you're hearing things and it's going into your brain, they're hearing it as well. That's right. You're like a little microphone. That's right. So ask RE just for just for fun. How he how he rates the show. What is just the show? Oh, geez. <laughs> is he, he, a he is cracking up. He said it is good to see people know of them but have fun with them that's what they like yeah he says that the intentions of the show are good and that he is proud yeah i was just going to say the same thing it's because all of our intentions are all the same and all of our energy is the same it's good it's all positive absolutely yeah and they love that's that's the name of the game and you know i've told people this before i did the conference in siberia i came home i did two small conferences I got multiple death threats and I said, I'm done. I'm going back out in the woods. Well, what they were going to do is they were going to catch me, put me in a cage. And then that way the Bigfoots would come in and save me and they could bag a foot. And then another guy was going to bash my head in with a lead pipe. So all my brains were going out on the ground. Then the Bigfoots would come in and they catch the Bigfoots. And I had kids at the time. And I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm done. I'm quiet. I'm going back out in the woods. And then Igor wanted me on Facebook. So I was on Facebook. And I didn't do any more conferences, even when asked. And I didn't, you know, I was still helping people behind the scenes, but I've never advertised for it. So I figured if the cosmos wanted them to find me, they would find me and then I would help. But I wasn't going to advertise. I wasn't going to volunteer or whatever. So anyway, all this time goes by. And then four and a half years ago, um, they wanted me public to talk about them. And that's the only reason why I came forward. And then when they get to the point where they don't want me public anymore i'll just disappear back in the sunset you know i mean it's their choice and i don't do any shows without their okay there have been shows i haven't done because they've said no we don't want our information there not a problem so it just you know it's up to them there's a lady barb horn hartman said and uh well because i'm asking all the questions or whatever even though it's about me, <laughs> but that's all I'm asking. <laughs> but she's, that's why he has me on here. <laughs> no, 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 no. But she said, "I'm hearing, I'm hearing that Brian is called Man of White, so she must be picking on something up on something too." Yeah, probably it? another one in there. It's there's, I mean, they can all call you different things. Yeah. So there's, it's very possible that that she is. I wouldn't doubt that at all. Yeah. Or, or the the uh, the general Sasquatch out in the world talk to him because you know, like a man with white hair, a man of white. Yeah, uh, I mean, really, and I think we all get different messages for different reasons, you know. So I believe her completely. That's probably what what Barbara Horn Hartman's Sasquatch is saying. You know, that's pretty, which is actually a really cool thing. She's getting communication, and this happens yeah. a lot with the Spork and Bean shows, where it's for people. Or watching and they're saying oh i had a con i had an interaction or i had a mind speaker i had a you know a poke or something you know so yeah it's- that it's all about connecting it's all about communicating it's all about the consciousness and learning from each other and working with each other 
Okay, let's have some fun here. It, in the what, 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 are they, what do they call Mr. Beans and what do they call uh, pork uh, and beans in the can? They have beans. always told me that when it bad, comes to Mike, bad. Mike is their friend. They think Mike is an ambassador for them because he has such a strong connection, not only with them and the e, but with the ETs. Mike bridges that gap. Yeah. Well, what do they and, call him? wise one they said he's wise well he's a wise one he is one one filled with wisdom yeah i'd see that how about how about mr alfred santariga you ball <laughs> they said that they have always been connected <laughs> he is they've always been connected with him that he is a high conscious being that there will always be a strong connection that he works with them. I think they pull you out at night and you do a lot of stuff at night in dream state with them from what I'm getting. Wow. I mean, I don't know. I've, I've had some weird dreams. So who knows? Yeah. We're, we're coming up, we're coming up on, uh, on three hours here. So I don't, wow. I don't know. If we, yeah. If and I need to get off because my if hubby's getting some advertisements and tell people to subscribe to the channel and uh, share and all that good we stuff. We will do it you again. Want, listen, I have a little pet peeve for all my audience out there. Is there's uh, there's like a lot of people who watch the show and they're not joining the the pork and beans group. So join. There you go. I've spoken. Join. <laughs> join or I'll get my crystals out and start working on them again and put put a. Sure, sure. I'm going to put my two guys on it. Hey, hey, you better, better join, or we're going to put a little black mark by us. <laughs> they, <just said, laughs> they just said that Al is kindred spirit. Oh, Ooh. wow. They share a kindred spirit with him. So, wow, wise, just... one, wise one, kindred spirit, and honored one. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure no, it just gave me was, cold chills when you said wise, that. Wise one is, is, is sort of like a translation for wise ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wise oh acre. Well, all right, guys. Uh, I'm going to get out of here, but it's always fun oh. to be here with you. Al, it was so wonderful to finally see oh, your face. Wonder, well, it was well, wonderful to see you, too. Can, and can you give us one you, more you, minute or so? Because I want to I get some information off you. Okay, real quick, and then, and then I, I got, get and then I got to do my my sign off too. So where can where can people? By the way, Robin, send me all your links in chat because I'm putting all the links for everybody. Uh, link to on, do, on link the, to do on the YouTube, on the YouTube uh, edit now. Do I have well, a link? Well, if I don't you have, have a YouTube link. channel or or how to get a hold of you, Tell everybody you can, you can be reached on the Pork and Beans Show group. Yeah, they, you guys can. Yeah, you can get me. <laughs> usually, I'll. It's just I give everybody my email. Is the easiest way to get hold of me, or they can find me under Robin Haynes McCray on Facebook. Okay, can you send me. Can you send me the links. In, okay, in, in Messenger, and I'll put them on the on the. Uh, yep. The or they can and, reach me through you guys, or if they go on YouTube, they can go on World Bigfoot Radio. Duke Sullivan, I talk to him multiple times a day, so they can get me on there. Well, uh, move out, Padre. Westward, how? <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Alfred? Uh, they can find me on Facebook at the Bronxville Paranormal Society, um, the New York State Sasquatch Organization, the New York State Dogman Project, and Dog the New York, State Uf New York State UFO Project. Any of those pages, you can, can find you me at. Me, can you send me every one of those links in, uh, in Messenger, and I will put them on the YouTube edit, too? Both of your guys. Absolutely. Al, sure, absolutely. Al, did you see my UFO video? I'm not sure. I've seen so many UFO videos. I can't keep track of them, which send this, this to me. I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, and I'll yeah. send you the photos from it. My son-in-law actually took the video while we were all standing on the porch watching it. Awesome. Mufan, he sent it to Mufon. I wouldn't have, but he sent it to Mufon. No, I don't send anything to Mufon. I don't give them any of my reports either. Yeah. I don't either, but he did. He didn't know. And he sent it to him and they said they investigated. It was a class one sighting and not terrestrial. So, awesome. I mean, but I get them all the time. I've had so many people at my house and they walk outside to get something out of their car and there's a UFO hover in there. And they're like, I had one go right over the top of me. I was out at the end of my driveway. It was nighttime. 
and I'm like looking at the underside of this ship and I was on the phone with a friend of mine and she's like, take a picture, take a picture. I said, are you insane? You're going to be the last person I talk to. I'm not stopping to hang up the phone to take a photo off. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've had craft over my house as well. wasn't wasn't happy that they were there, but you know that's a, that's a story for another day. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, which reminds me, a story for another day. Can we have you back on the show, Alfred? Soon, you're about due. For oh, other, absolutely. Other just episode, whenever, huh? whenever you guys want me, just reach out. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'd it's love to come thing, back. You know, I'm, I'm about seven or eight. I'm, I'm doing really good lately. I'm about seven or eight shows ahead of the game now. I'm, I'm already booked into the middle of March, but uh, I'll, get, awesome. I'll get a hold of you. I'll get you somewhere in, in March or something. Yeah, shoot me some dates. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So thanks, everybody, for coming. So on behalf of Port Cunningham and the world's <laughs> handsomest man, Frank Oliver Beans. This has been the Pork and Bean Show, and thank you to our special guest, Robin McRae, and thank, thank you, Albert Santariga, for, for another Italian uh, guy like myself, or I'm part anyway. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me in. I mean, I, I just popped in to, to see you guys and to listen to Robin, because I love her to death, so I always oh, try to catch her. Are. I adore you. Thank yeah, you thank so you. much, Dear. everybody, that showed up, and I'll send you that stuff out. Oh, absolutely, please. That's when I love hearing Mr. Beans talk the most when his mouth's moving and we can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay, God. everybody. Right, thanks best. thanks to the audience. Know. Thanks for all your great questions. Uh, this was a if great show. If you're watching like Sasquatch that. on YouTube, then Sasquatch is watching you. That's right. Yahoo. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye. Mm -hmm. Ciao.